This is Ralph Michaels with your college basketball big game breakdown for Wednesday, December the 6th. The Memphis Tigers come in at 5-2. to two. Excuse me, 5-2. and two. They travel to Richmond. Maybe Steve's going to this game tonight. We'll see in his neck of the wood facing VCU. Now, together the team returned one starter. Big difference, though. Memphis came out, has the top 15 recruiting class, the top 15 transfer class, and you've seen Penny Hardaway get them off to a 5-2 and two start. Now they are 4-3-1 and one ATS overall, but the strength of schedule they played is the number 28 schedule in the country. When you want to start preparing for your conference play, one way to do it is to face Missouri on the road, face Michigan, Arkansas, Villanova, and Old Miss, all on the road or in neutral settings. On the flip side, VCU has played one team in Memphis's range that was against Iowa State in a neutral setting. They actually played a good game, only losing by four. Now, we're accustomed to seeing havoc at, at Virginia Commonwealth, and what that is is, yeah, they force the ball over on offense, but their defense is usually elite. Last year, they were number seven in turnover defense. Well, Ryan Odom came over from Utah State. He had to have some tutors in to help learn the system. Despite returning zero starters, he had four key guys back, and he brought a couple guys with him from Utah State. So he wanted to try to keep the same Havoc type of system. But you have a team with zero returning starters, a brand new head coach, trying to learn a team with last year. I mean, they had two incredible uh, guards with Baldwin and Nunn. So those guys were seasoned veterans in this Havoc defense. Now they're struggling a bit. Turnover defense, number 290. Turnover offense, number 351. Folks, that's in the bottom 10 in all the country. Memphis, Memphis still turns the ball over, but remember, they've played the number 62 toughest slate of schedules, so they've been accustomed to this. You look at turnovers, they are number 85 in defensive turnovers. And one thing people ask me this quite a bit, and I just want to share this with you. A lot of people go to Ken Palm for their, you know, efficiency rankings and how he has the teams rated. Well, you look at D1 experience. Memphis is number 37, but minutes continuity, they're 342. How can it be such a disparity? Well, two different categories. D1 experience are players that started for any D1 team. So all five of Memphis starters have all played at least three years of basketball, a very experienced team. While here, only 10.4% of the returning points and minutes return, it is still a very, very experienced bunch. VCU taking a big step up in class. Memphis taking a step down in class. The Memphis Tigers get it done tonight. Jimmy Adams here with your big game breakdown. And we're going to take a look at the high profile matchup between Texas and Marquette. So Marquette returns home in bounce back mode after a loss to in-state rival Wisconsin on Saturday. Their only other loss was by three points to Purdue. And this is not a team that just put together a cupcake schedule to rack up wins. I mean, the Golden Eagles have already beaten Kansas, UCLA, and Illinois. So they are absolutely battle tested as they welcome Texas to Milwaukee. Um, there's also some extra incentive here for head coach Shaka Smart as he gets to face his former team. And although he would probably not admit it publicly, he'll be trying to put up as many points as possible. As possible, These coaches that get to face their former teams, they want to put on a good impression. And Marquette certainly has the talent to do so. They are great offensively, ranking 11th in adjusted offensive efficiency. They don't turn the ball over often. In fact, they do a great job of forcing turnovers and outscoring their opponents off of those turnovers. We're going to learn a lot about Texas as they mainly have beat up on inferior competition. Their one loss came to UConn, but they've done a great job on offense as well. The Longhorns can knock down the ball from both inside and outside the arc. And where they really have an edge here is on the offensive glass. Marquette really struggles in the rebounding department, and that was a, one of the major reasons for their loss to Wisconsin. They allowed 15 offensive boards in that game, so expect Texas to have multiple second-chance opportunities if you're thinking about playing the side. 
Marquette's going to really bring it at home, though, as this spread is telling you. But these are two very productive offenses. I'm going to recommend we play this one up and over the total. Steve Merrill back with a big game breakdown for Wednesday night college hoops. I'm going to look at a Big Ten battle between Nebraska and Minnesota. And by the way, Ralph Michaels, I'm not going to the BCU game. I'll be at a different in-state game, which will be my best bet for the show here coming up in just a bit. So stay tuned to find out which game Waldo will be at tonight. By the way, AU Virginia legend Donovan Bridgeforth, my friend, will be at the BCU game tonight on Wednesday. But we're looking at this Nebraska-Minnesota game this evening, and this is an interesting matchup between two teams that played a slower style of play. Both played equally good defense, really right across the board, pretty stout on defense this year. But the difference very well might be Nebraska, the stronger offensive team, and that's why we've seen some money come in on the Cornhuskers on Wednesday morning. They opened as a one-and-a-half-point favorite, now up to two. I even see some two-and-a-half starting to creep. My concern, though, with Nebraska, even though I do think that's the preferred side, is that this is their first true road game of the season. Almost a month in, actually a full month in, they played back on November 6th against Lindenwood at home. And now a month later, December 6th, they're finally playing a true road game. They do have an impressive neutral court win against Oregon State back in November, but no true road game. And Minnesota is a very difficult place to play. Seats, uh, the bench below the court, just a unique setup. And Minnesota's always had a pretty strong home road dichotomy, and that's been the case so far this season. Five and one straight up, 0 oh and two away from home. Um, so I think even though the situ- even though Nebraska probably the better overall team, and by the way, they're about 100 points better efficiency-wise offensively, the spot does concern me. So instead of looking at the side, let's look at the total here tonight in this game between Nebraska. Saw it open around 146 and a half, up to 147 now in most spots. Um, but I think there is value with the under 147. These are two teams, as I mentioned before, both play on the slower pace style. And when they get two teams that play that way, it slows the game down even more. Keep in mind, their pace rating is against some fast teams as well. But both teams want to play slow half-court basketball. I do think Nebraska on the road might struggle a little bit offensively for the first time in a true road game. And Minnesota, although they've shot the ball well at times this year, um, I still rate them as a very mediocre offensive team. So two good defensive teams, slow pace of play. Let's not try to guess how Nebraska plays in their first road game. Instead, let's look at the total. Take on one for, under 147 in this game at 9 o'clock Eastern tonight on Wednesday. This is Ralph Michaels with my college basketball best bet for Wednesday, December 6th. The San Francisco Dons traveling to Nashville to face Vanderbilt. Should San Francisco be a small favorite? I do believe they should. You look at the Dons. They're an established team. Last year, they had a very nice season. We're in the second year of uh, – of Chris G's coaching tenure. You look at the season, five and three this season, but the losses, I have no problems with all three losses. Away to Boise State, they lose by five and cover. As a dog to Grand Canyon, they're getting two and a half. They lose by four. They fail to cover by one and a half. They go to Arizona State in their last game, snapping a three game straight up an ATS win streak. They're getting two to Arizona State. They shot poorly. So the one thing that does concern me about San Francisco, while they're shooting very well on the season, Ken Palm has them number 146, so just above the Mendoza line. On the road at Boise, they shot 44%. And at Arizona State, they shot 36%. We look at Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt is a team that last year finished 22-15, and Jerry Stackhouse brought some excitement back. So they start this year. Are they excited? Well, they had three returning starters. They had a top 40 recruiting class. They decided to go the recruiting class and not really transfers to try to build for the next few years. And they open the season and all that excitement, boom, out the window with a loss to Presbyterian, you know, as a sizable favorite. And in fact, they were a 16 point favorite and they lose that game by six. They beat upstate, but don't cover. They beat Greensboro in a pick'em game, do cover. They're laying 19 and a half to Central Arkansas. They only win by four. NC State, they lose as a dog in cover. Arizona State, both teams played Arizona State. They lost by 15. Come back off that Las Vegas trip, play a physical Boston College team, only shoot 36%, allow 52%. And against Alabama, well, they finally got it right. But how right did they get it? They played Alabama A&M. They were an 18-and-a-half-point favorite. They won the game by 19. So, yes, it's a cover, but those are the covers we look at. You know, Vandy 
has had two injuries already. Their center has missed the last three games. They had another player start the last game, and they've already had nine different players start so far this season. They can't get any defensive continuity. They're number 331 in three-point defense, 253 in offensive efficiency. And you look at San Francisco. I do like this team this year. Again, all three losses on the road close to being covers. Their defense is elite. Ken Palm has them rated number 25. The offense is the question. When you're on the road, can your offense score enough to help you out and win the game? In this case, against this Vanderbilt team, I completely think so. You look at San Francisco's turnover. They've been a poor turnover team on offense, but Vanderbilt, again, horrible on defense. So the one negative San Fran has had isn't a negative in this game. You do look at San Fran's defense. I told you about their uh, adjusted efficiency being top 25. Their turnovers are number 36. Their effective field goal percentage, they're, they're, uh, they're 69. And def rebounding, top 70 on offense, top 70 on defense. You have a team that can rebound and play defense. That is a team that can go on the road, be it even on the SEC road against the SEC's weakest, and pull the wind out. My best bet on San Francisco, and guys, don't forget, two great specials. Any capper, the rest of the month of December, $199, or check out the Dynamic Duo Bowl special I have with the legend himself, Mr. Dave Koken. We do this annually. You get my bowls and his bowls for just $149. Head to my page or his homepage to take advantage. Happy holidays. Let's get you guys a best bet for today. But real quick, let me just remind you, it is Customer Appreciation Day. And that means you can grab everyone's plays, including mine, for just five bucks. We have been on fire since for really over a month now, up 58 units in all sports since November 2nd. So definitely head on over to the site, grab my college basketball best bet, and consider a long term subscription as well. But all right, we are headed to Reno for today's best bet with a team that has clearly been underrated in the betting market for the entire first month of the season. Nevada is a perfect 6-0 and on the year, but more importantly for us is the fact that they're 5-1 and against the spread. You may remember that the Wolfpack went to Seattle and beat Washington straight up earlier in the year, and aside from that, they've blown out every other team that they've faced. We have a huge advantage on both ends of the floor here, and when it comes to taking care of the ball, they're the second best team in the nation, turning it over just 11.2% of the time, trailing only Richmond of all teams. Some may be surprised to learn that. But they're fresh off a 14-point win over Loyola Marymount, and UC Davis is much worse. To give you some idea, if you don't follow the program closely, the Aggies just lost by 12 to Oregon State, a team that is not good. And prior to that, lost straight up to Sacramento State, a team that's downright awful. UC Davis has major turnover issues. We've talked about how Nevada is good at taking care of the ball. Well, the Aggies rank 344th in turnover percentage on offense. The defense grades out terrible. They can't guard anyone from inside or outside the arc. Um, they've scored 63 and 59 in their last two and are just one and four ATS on the season. So we have two teams trending in completely opposite directions. This is a total mismatch. Lay the points as the Wolfpack get another win and cover at home tonight. Nevada for today's best bet. Let's look at a free basketball play for Wednesday night in college hoops. It's a loaded card tonight. I've been red hot in all sports, hitting over 70% the past couple weeks. It continues with a powerful lineup tonight on Wednesday. Check out my best bets for Wednesday night college and pro basketball on my page right now, stevemerrillwagertalk.com. Daily packages, single plays 25, daily packages 39, or save big with the end of year special. Get the rest of 2023 all sports for just over seven and a half dollars a day. No promo code needed. That price is available this week only, and it's locked in at $199 for the rest of the calendar year, the rest of 2023. So whether you sign up on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, it's the same price. So why wait? Get on board tonight on Wednesday. Get on my red hot all sports. Get only not college and pro basketball, but also college and pro football for the rest of the year, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, let's go to my neck of woods here in Williamsburg, Virginia. A game I will be attending in person tonight. Scott Grafton and Ironbound Jim having a special promotion at the game, but there'll also be a lot of Old Dominion fans there because Norfolk just about 50 minutes down the road, and they always pack Kaplan 
when they play the Tribe. And Old Dominion has owned this series here the past few seasons. Dane Fisher's first year of William & Mary, this is his fifth year as head coach. His first season, they did pull the upset 63-46. But keep in mind, they had future NBA player Nathan Knight on that team. The two teams ranked about only 20 points apart in the Kim Palm final rankings. But that's not been the case last three years. Old Dominion's been the better team. And they've won the past three games by 8, 15, and 10-point margins. This line was minus three overnight and quickly on Wednesday morning went to minus four with some sharp action coming in on Old Dominion. And I agree with that move. I'll be pulling for the Tribe, but the smart play is Old Dominion in this game for a couple reasons. First of all, William Mary banged up. Uh, grad transfer help has been out the past several games. He is by far the team's best three-point shooter, so that takes away the three-point weapon tonight. And it has showed uh, William Mary has now lost six of their last seven games straight up after a 2-0 start this year. Uh, they've gone one in five ATS their last six, and it's been nothing misleading about it. The last two losses at, at Norfolk State uh, a week ago, they lost that game by 34 and then followed it up this Saturday with a 19-point loss at Richmond. And defense has been the problem. They gave, gave up 184 combined points in those two losses. Old Dominion plays slow half-court basketball, so you have to be able to score in the front court. And that's not William Mary's strength. And once again, without your best three-point shooter, it's even harder to score in a half-court game. Uh, Old Dominion holds a substantial defensive edge. Uh, William Mary, one of the weakest defensive teams in the country. And Jeff Jones and Old Dominion always play good, hard-nosed, half-court defense. The short price and the better team is Old Dominion here. Lay it minus four. Old Dominion gets the win tonight on Wednesday. And don't forget my strongest best bets right now, including that rest of the year special, stevemerrillwagertalk.com.